behöver du en bil? Mabi hyrbilar finns på över 150 platser i landet och vi har nästan lika många modeller att välja på. Mabi hyrbilar. Hyrbilar som passar dig. Well, things are certainly heating up as we reach the playoffs and the round of 15 of the Berlin Svenska E-Racing Ligans Oval Series here for the 2023-24 Championship. Of course, the top 15 in the Championship at the end of the regular season have locked themselves into the next two rounds here at Chicago Land today and then Richmond in a couple of weeks' time to find out who the top 10 will be to advance to the next stage of the process. It's myself, Cameron Roger, Justin Prince alongside me and Dane Baird on the production of this Racebot TV broadcast and here is what we've been doing over the last several months now all the way back in august we started a daytona we worked away across uh, america before we got to talladega a couple of weeks ago and of course we had a, an amazing battle there um as we do but that of course left us with yes Ericsson being the regular season champion and carrying all those extra bonus points into this round of 15 here for the bright esports arena 350 at chicago land where you're basically turning left all the time and here is how the champion looks yes Ericsson taking six wins out of 15 races and then you see we had in total six winners across those 15 races and we ended up with our top 15 of Oscar Fredrickson just sneaking his way through at that race in Talladega of course we're now looking for the top 10 over the next couple of races and the person on the bubble right now is Marcus Hogman there in that 10th place yes Ericsson is 51 points clear at the front so he's pretty much confirmed already realistically and of course the points need to be done and it's going to be a very interesting one indeed we've got 145 laps of action coming away a stage of lap 50 but the fuel only lasts about 40 odd laps so we are expecting a three stop strategy in the race and that always brings up some spice and of course the odd caution here and there and Justin certainly it's a, a tricky track to go racing especially at the start of a playoff but this is where the top drivers they have to stand up and take victory if they want to get through yes you have to be able to get yourself wins because as we were already seen with the schedule, Richmond is the latter part of this round, and you don't want to have to rely upon surviving a short track race. When it comes to tonight, if you really want to choose shot to be able to get comfortable, to be able to battle for the middle portions of the championship rounds, you have to get it done here. This is a mile and a half, much of the schedule months the mile and a half. This is the place where you can really size yourself up speed wise. But with the strategy you mentioned with the fuel on hand, you're talking about at least three pit stops here tonight. That's going to be definitely on the minds of many of these drivers to make sure they get it right and time it out to where they get themselves points. But also think about how are they going to separate those tires? Yeah, certainly, as you mentioned, if there's four stints, we have five sets of tires. There's only one extra. If there is multiple cautions and things get a little bit spicy, maybe you, you uh, use those up a little bit more often um, and you only really have one joker or everyone will have one joker in that uh, case with the one extra set of tires. So the, uh, the tire strategy is going to be coming into it. And if you get some long periods of green flag running as ever, that will be very, very interesting in this series. As we are in the playoffs, you can see we've got the yellow banners here for the drivers, uh, both on the sort of the rear spoiler and on the window as well. And there'll be a uh, notation in the tower uh, when that comes up as well. So hopefully we can keep you up to date with all of the drivers working their way through the playoffs. Of course, we are in the qualifying session now. And you see all the blue highlighted drivers are up there in the playoffs. So actually, pretty much all of them are up towards the front, um, which is... Uh, to be, yeah, to be uh, you know, expected with the speed that they showed over the course of the season. But now this is when it counts. And Marcus Hogman, I was saying he was the driver on the bubble in that 10th position. And he's put himself up towards the front by half a tenth of a second. Give that a moment, though, because Jesper Eriksson, there's a reason he's won six times this season. He's been extremely consistent when it comes to the ovals throughout the season. Forza Sports by Abit Machine. 
Looking like they've got a solid lap built up. Can Erickson get himself to the 30.5s again? No. That's a terrible start to the qualifying for the postseason for him. Yeah, that is a tricky one. And he certainly had a, a couple of races, despite the six race wins, he did have a couple of races here and there um, where he struggled a little bit, relatively speaking. Uh, but certainly that is uh, way further down than he would have wanted. There's a 101 of Hawkins shot having some sort of issue there. Currently up in second place, but he's um, stopped to the side of the track. We're certainly looking very good for him. Also, Tony Uvenen in the 84 machine up there inside the top three. That's a little bit more like it from a driver missing out on being inside the top 15. There's our Dan Solo as well, the highest ranked driver to not win a race so far this season. Yeah, I think tonight, though, the best, the best are going to be the months, the contenders. I know that's a cliche thing to say, but when you talk about race tracks throughout the season, like, say, Charlotte, that's track Homer went well at. Erickson was a contender in that race. Erickson dominated tracks like Indianapolis. Las Vegas can have a lot of shuffling. Keep in mind tonight, though, there is the factor of expected to at least start in the pack in terms of a packy type of race, and it could be hard to break away. Draft is going to be critical to start. The track position going to be ever more so critical as well. Once things really spread out after 15, 20 laps, though, I think that will be the main difference on where you see the best break away from the good and the great. And this is where we have to see how the team play is going to come into it as well. Of course, back at the last couple of races, we saw the absolute trains, all of the all concept cars working together. They had trains of five or six of them in one line uh, at points. Also fours as well. They're the two sort of biggest teams as such. But of course, we've got Bright Esports. They got um, three race victories over the course of the regular season. And let's see how they line up though here for Chicago Land tonight to open up the playoffs. Is Marcus Hogman on the pole position with Hogenshot in behind him. Then we have Tony Uvenen, Alex Aradson inside your top four. Then it is Oscar Fredrickson and Alec, uh, Eric Blix, I should say, inside the top six. So five playoff drivers up there on the front three rows. And then, of course, we're going to continue on with some of the drivers up towards the top. Linus Brewstrom, we got a win just a few races ago. Anton Norman there in eighth place. Then we got Jonas Skoglund and Gunnarsson, the reigning champion down there in P10. Then we've got the two teammates of Dennis Sharp and Anton Ratberg on your sixth uh, row for su uh, superior top dogs. And of course, we're trying to have a little bit of a better race than last time, where, unfortunately, they were back uh, spinning around quite a few times. Have Linnison down in 13th place and Holmer in, in 14th. Lundberg, Wallen, and then Dan Solo and Jesper Eriksson. These drivers all a little bit lower down than they would have wanted. Uh, Dan Holmer, two-time winner so far this season in P19. Kenneth Tier in P20. Erling Zakrasen in your top 11 rows. Then it is uh, Bjorn Broström and Cedric Holmbom uh, inside your top 24. And then on the final few rows of the grid is going to be Emily Fagrell, uh, 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 Jansen in uh, P26, Ericsson, Allard, and then Marcus Stiller in the 0-13 to round out the 29 cars uh, working their way through. Of course, Justin, the drivers, we haven't necessarily spoken uh, about them yet. The ones who are not necessarily in the playoff positions, they could certainly cause some quite big upsets and quite, quite big changes to how the points are going to be gifted out here if they sort of get in uh, in between some of the playoff drivers they'll be taking some points away and also potentially getting the race win and that takes a big opportunity away from someone too yeah not just with the stage win but obviously with the race win itself that essentially takes away one guaranteed position for the next round so if you're amongst these postseason drivers you have to get the win today you can't afford to say oh it's fine the guy who is now the postseason one or the driver or any of that phrasing it, anything could happen at richmond that could take you out of the postseason yeah it certainly could of course we've got uh two quite big different tracks here we've got the 1.5 mile then we got the uh 0.75 mile next time at richmond so two different styles of racing He's going to come down to, obviously, the best driver on the day as ever. 145 laps of action coming your way. We have a stage of lap 50, but as ever in this series, we continue under green flag running. There'll be a pit stop about 10 laps before that, around lap 40-ish, uh, depending on how much fuel saving they do. And that could always uh, open up the doors for drivers trying to get themselves a stage win and get themselves some extra points. And what I do like 
is we have some different drivers up towards the front. Hawkman, uh, Schotter, Uven and inside your top three. They're not necessarily drivers who realistically are going to be fighting for this championship, but they have this opportunity uh, to win a race, um, especially for the likes of Hawkman and, and, uh, and Uven. And they're trying to get themselves up towards the front. It is going to be a very difficult one uh, indeed for them, though. But we come to the green flag. The pace truck goes in and we go green flag here for the playoffs of the bonus fence get e-racing league and we get underway here for the bright esports arena 350 at chicago land let's see how these drivers are going to work their way through inside the top 10 of this playoffs here is the first race coming through the first corner everyone is staying very nice and settled for now and expect two by two at least to start off the action especially in the heart of the pack already though Defensive driver to hold on to the inside, but also drivers like Alexander Erlitson, who's looked good at tracks like Vegas this year, want to get to the inside. Those force machines qualified very well after all. They certainly have, and I do like that we've had such a clean start. Of course, the drivers will be pushing the way up towards the front. We're getting into a little bit of a sort of a single file formation at the front as they try and work themselves into a racing line. But of course, uh, with the banking around here, you can use the outer grooves if you can try and uh, make it work on the outside line. But you see the top five, six or so, it's really starting to get into that single file. I think as Ariton on uh, on the sort of seventh row, so he's uh, seventh place, I should say, dropping down to the low line, trying to potentially make a move. But I think he's actually lost a place. Uman's got him for that seventh. For we come across the line to start uh, lap number three. So they dropping back a little bit from, I think, P4 on the grid. Now, you mentioned in terms of the potential of movement. One thing to talk about a bit with Chicago land, it's similar to the way that of Kansas, where the lines can be prevalent as contact to the wall. Hold on one second. Oscar Fredrickson hit the wall and stacked everyone up on the top side. Linus Brostrom's having an awesome start to this race. Already up inside the top three. He's got quite a few drives. Got a couple of the all uh in behind of Blix and Ullman trying to follow him through. So you go two by two across the line, maybe in three, four wide in the background as they come across the stripe. Obviously, huge apron here. Drivers diving to that left-hand side, but they're working their way nicely through uh, turns one and two now. Uh, Brostrom really having a good start. Uh, Aronson, who he just overtook not too long ago, is down in P9. So really a bit of a difference in the speed at this moment in time. And look at all the yellow banners of these playoff drivers fighting their way through but what it's doing is letting the top two get away yeah, and the vast majority of the front runners do have those yellow banners outside of Ubin and I was about to say before the wall contact though the top line can be very prevalent to make some of the passes today because of that ability to pinch anyone below you on down force them off the gas and make the pass but a main thought to think about is do you try and wrap the bottom, try and go the short distance around, or do you try and ride against the wall? There are different tire burn methods, so to speak, that you have if you try and run the bottom where you can burn a little bit more in terms of the rear. In terms of the top, can burn a little bit more of the right front depending on the race circumstances and the race circuit. Yeah, it's uh, definitely sort of something that the drivers can uh yeah change over the course of the stint and work out how the balance of the car is working what uh, can they do to try and make the car uh run a little bit better later on in the stint because ultimately if we're doing 40 odd lap stints the tires are really going to be screaming especially here as we were mentioning you're pretty much turning left all the time uh, around here there's always pressure on those right hand tires especially the front right this is going to be a bit of a, a tricky one um for them to to work that out especially when we're expecting like a three-stop strategy or so um, but it's looking good for a couple of drivers. Uh, Oliver Wallens also jumped inside the top 10. He's up into P9. And we know he's a driver who is very, very fast. Has run up towards the front for a long, long time. Uh, last time out at Talladega as well. And generally over the course of the last few months, he's working his way up towards the front. And obviously not being inside the playoff points, uh, the playoff positions, I should say. He could just absolutely go for this. That might be another one up the inside there of Scogland to get up into P8. I almost wonder if some of the drivers are aggressively saving a bit on the fuel trying to stretch the gas if possible those extra couple laps with the pack because he's just blistering around some of these drivers five miles an hour quicker that being said that's gonna hurt him long run trouble in front of him and wallen says you know what i'm just gonna give a push instead to my teammate even though he just hit the wall 
<laughs> oh, and there's a huge run around the outside, almost four wide for a moment in time. We could remain three wide on the exit of four. Oliver one and rides up towards the wall and trying to make it work. P6 he's got, and that might be uh, confirmed by the time we get across up towards turn one. It is diving up the inside, using that momentum. We might be able to get blixed as well. This could be three, four positions in just one lap as the 72 goes up the inside of the 95. Got to be careful not to run too far wide as the 95 gets into the wall as they're all wiggling about in the background, really starting to push and uh, make these positions. Huge set up the inside we're getting now so as hawking shot in the water one machine trying to make his way back through blex has to cover that one off and comes down low and a lot of give and take there in the midst of that because Jonas Skoglund nearly became part of an incident with how the checkers are starting to play out but i will say again with wallen pretty clear that he's not saving a lot of these others are saying let's take a couple tenths off per corner right now try and stretch it try and save the tires outside of that you're talking about most of the field running 30.9s. The save group is running half a second slower. And that will really add up quite a lot. And if we get a really long green flag run here, then the top few drivers will start to pull away even further. And of course, then when you start talking about getting a stage win later on, uh, that might be very, very tricky indeed. Stage 11, 50, remember, so still a little bit of a wait, and we are expecting pit stops uh, by that time. On the middle of the screen, there's actually, there's the 37 of Jesper Eriksson coming through from a slightly disappointing qualifying or so. Actually, um, he's got way past his teammate. Aronson has really struggled here. He's dropped, you know, massively down the field as uh, he hasn't been able to keep up with his four Esports teammates. Eriksson's up there in P12. Gunnarsson, running champion in behind him in P20. But look at this. Uh, absolute gaggle of cars fighting their way through the trioval section and this is just great batting Anton Ullman up there into P4 gets past Wallen I'm going to say yes for Ericsson did start 18th so that's a rough time so far for Ericsson to get through this pack because here's the thing these drivers are lo losing this up time here in the midst of a lot of these fights now too and when you don't have that draft in front of you it can be extremely difficult to catch anyone else in front on equal tires or equal stints for a lot of these drivers, the hope is get a caution or at least strategize to be able to find a way to get somebody to work with to get up to those top two because those top two started working together from the onset. Everyone you see on screen said, you know what, let's go three wide from the get-go and they immediately lost the draft to the leaders. Yeah, there's just so much going on here. Every corner, the drivers are on, on completely different lines, losing each other 10th by 10th. And it just means that they're not going as fast as they can. But then I guess if you're in the middle of that, you kind of just have to, to play ball because you just have to see the opportunities that come your way. Any doors that open up, and it's going to be difficult to try and pull forward of this gap because of this group because you're always just, uh, you know, you're never going to find the gap as all cars are in the wall again. That was a 42. Anton Ehrman tapping the wall in the exit of uh, turn two. They need to be careful of that over the course of the race. The, uh, the damage will add up. And we have seen how that can hinder cars later on in the race, especially when you uh, are thinking about potential pit stops. Don't be having any sort of uh, damage repairs to do as we come across the line once more. Uh, lap 15 of 145. And they are still continuing nicely, though. Green flag conditions. Yeah, just continuing to play it very close, I will say, because one of the main places for mistakes throughout the day. Expect turn two exit to be a place where cautions may breed cautions. A lot of these drivers are getting so tight from running up towards the top or the middle of the lines that when they're starting to exit the corner, they track up, they burn that right front tire, and they're trying to keep that momentum so high up that they're nearly scraping these walls, and all it's going to take is one driver to catch it at the wrong time, catch the very end of the safer barrier right where it starts turning the red logos there, and that could be a major stack up. We've nearly seen that three times already in 16 laps. Look how many playoff drivers are on the screen as well. That could be huge. Of course, plenty of laps to go. They can always come back, but still, and that could certainly change things very, very quickly. Uh, indeed, we are expecting about 40 laps on a few runs. So we're getting to about half distance and they do look like they're fighting. So I don't know how much savings going on here. Uh, they Everyone seems like they want to get up towards the front. I don't think anyone um, is you know, actively sitting in behind. They're really just trying to um, get the places up towards the front and get 
every last position that they can because you never know how the race is going to go later on. But as we come to the end of lap 17, we've got Hogman and Uvenen still leading up towards the front. And then a couple of seconds back to this absolute group of cars uh, to finish off the top 15 or so. And it's uh, Linus Brewstrom who's leading the way of Oliver Wallen. They've actually now got about half a second gap as actually on the inside there, we're starting to see a few drivers battling. It's the 81 of half Lederson, but he can't quite keep it going. Passing could be very tricky here, too, as we're already seeing. It is very aerial sensitive. It's almost like a trap lock in a sense right now. And I think we might see that start to shift a little bit because this is a round where we expect to see tire wear to come in. By the way, you asked the question or mentioned the phrasing of, it doesn't look like they're saving. Well, stretching eight laps with the already limited fuel tank is a stretch in of itself, Cameron. That being said here, the time is about the same as when it looked like they're saving. If anything, the fall off has now fallen towards that same pace. So what did they lose outside of the fact they're now gaining on the leaders who burned up their stuff, it looks like, by two tenths a lap? Yeah, certainly a, a weird one how that, um, how that was working, as you say, with, with the maths in terms of the lap time. But if it works out, maybe just it being in the group of cars is enough. And obviously, I wasn't expecting them to save completely to the stages. Oh, the driver's getting very close on the exit of turn number two. But, you know, we have seen drivers and teams trying to do something different on the strategy uh, compared to each other rather than just following every single one in the pit lane, especially when there's certain teams like All Contact Force who've got multiple drivers up here. They could potentially bit, uh, box everyone at the same time and try and... Uh, do something different. We did see this um, in Talladega where we saw the Ulcan Tech cars pit very, very early all together. And then that did seem to work. But of course, different style of track, um, different aero config on the cars, and it might not work quite the same as these, uh, these uh, drivers really are pushing the limits uh, of what they can do and uh, what they can do in these battles. But um, it's always that someone's going up way high there. I think it was uh, the 42 of Ullman um, is just going way too fast into turn three. But it looks like he's okay, though. He's defending hard to the inside line now to defend. Yeah, I'm surprised Omen's trying that right now, though, because this is around the point where if you ride on that apron down the front straight away, first of all, it's like an extra turn or an extra bit of turn because you have to put a lot more steering angle into it so it burns up the tires actually long term more than saving. Better yet, when it comes to that, when you come back off the transition, or better yet, across the transition from racetrack to apron, it can destabilize the car and spin you out. Omen's very lucky that didn't happen there in that initial case. Now, for Hapley, still boxed in, though, as we see in the 81. Everybody just continuing to just ride the bottom. Yeah, no, I think they are slightly calming down now. Uh, there's a couple of car lengths getting some of these battle and some of these gaps, but as I say that, Eric Blix goes up the inside of his teammate. The 42 is definitely struggling, though. He goes way up high once again in turn three. That's going to potentially lose him some more positions as we come down the front straight away. I think that's Jesper Eriksson and Gunnarsson also getting through as we come through the tri -oval. So really not working out for the 42 as he's starting to just struggle on those tires a little bit, maybe over pushing them in the first half of the stint. And we see a couple of drivers who maybe saved just that extra 1% more, but now having the better grip of this part of the stint. As it seems like the uh, the top two of, uh, of this group of Wallen and Brewstrom did slightly pull away a few laps ago, but it seems Brewstrom is now uh, struggling because Wallen's pulling away. We start to see Fredrickson get involved. Yeah, these drivers in this group, mind you, have chipped away about seven tenths over the past 10 laps. So the switch has flipped, so to speak in terms of how the pace is going. Because Hagman and Uvalin, with the fact they weren't really fighting, the fact they just broke away, looked to be maybe doing the right way, at least on the eye test. But right now on the data test, right now this main pack seems to, now that they're all drafting and not fighting, being able to chip away the gap. There's a chance in the next 10 laps even, that all these cars are going to be right on the back bumper of the 84 and have a chance to at least get close to Hegman right as pit stops are about to start. This is uh, going to be working out quite nicely, I think, over the course uh, of the race. They're still at that point. Uh, where they're just slowly making the positions one by one. Uh, as we see a few moves actually now in towards turn three this time around. Hafflinson's got uh, Fredrickson there for P5. 
As we see a few dives to the inside, but I think that is just about it. Blix is also trying to make a move uh, on Fredrickson as well. Follow his team teammate through in towards turn one. I think he might be able to do it just up the inside there, and he should do so. Is actually Gunnarsson follows through. So the three Orkin Tech cars all getting Fredrickson in the space of three corners, which is not the ideal situation. And now we're also seeing the 37 there. Yes, but Ericsson trying to get his teammates. It's going to be four positions lost there. Um, for, of course, a race a winner, um, almost a race winner so far this season. Unfortunately, uh, having some issues there, but looking very good indeed as you come across the line once more. Uh, we're still, still seeing the 42 drop down the field. I think that's more down to in terms of Omen just burning up a lot of his stuff, trying to defend in terms of using the apron, in terms of trying to use a lot of tire to make passes early. We've already seen that start to come into play a little bit for some of these drivers. I think that's just burning up your stuff. Ericsson's amongst those who's done very solid, though, throughout all this. The six-time race winner up 10 positions, and he's starting to become one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. Yeah, it certainly is. And I am loving to see that we've seen that balance shift over the course of the stint. We're starting to get into that, you know, three quarters of the stint now. And maybe some drivers are just getting more comfortable, taking slightly more risks and uh, just not quite saving potentially what we saw in that first um, first part of the stint. And then therefore you start seeing the top drivers working their way up towards the front. And it's all, all the uh, the top names that you would expect. Of course, the top four have been pretty stable for a while now, but now in behind them, we've got Hafferton, Blix, Ericsson, Gunnarsson, all uh, in their work, in their way, slowly forward up towards the front. As, of course, in the back, on all the game, two drivers there. They're Sherp trying to go all the way around the outside of Fredrickson. You might be able to do it, actually. And that is a huge move there on the outside, is in the background. Also seeing Hawkins shot um, trying to defend on the inside line there. Fredrickson really, really struggling now over the course of the last few laps, dropping, uh, you know, a good sort of second or so up towards his teammate and of course losing out the way but uh, talking of losing out also towards the front Baldwin and Uven and they've been caught and Wallen is really uh, on the back of them now for those top three positions yeah that draft by the way is completely closed up here that lead group is now in range to be with the leaders Travis White could get shot have absolutely struggled this run we mentioned how good the qualifying run was. Not so good at the race pace. But now everybody else is about to have a chance to converge with the pit window opening up. With pit stops expected pretty soon. This is about to get a pretty in, to be become a pretty intense here up at the very front. Because there's that trap we're just talking about. Wallen is there. And Wallen has brought Brostrom, Hapwittison, Blix, Erickson, and Jonas Gunnarsson right up to the doorstep. And yeah, this is what we love because it's going to be a bit of a, yeah, a bit of a game to be honest. Who is going to uh, to stop first as well? Who is uh, worked their tires too much before that stage? Let's see. Wallen now having a run to the outside, really using that momentum, might be able to get up inside the top two who have been stable for so long. And now that is turned around because Uven has dropped down into third. Wallen really using that high line to try and keep the momentum all the way around the outside. Marcus Hogman is going to be struggling to hold on to this lead, but actually in the wall goes Wallen and maybe just showing he's over pushing at this point but the train of cars in behind are really really caught up and I wouldn't be surprised if we see the uh, the lead change very very quickly and it might be this time around over one look how much more grip he's got coming off three and four and as we come across the stripe it is going to be uh, Oliver Wallen leading the way onto lap 34. Heckman's tires are absolutely dead at this point if he can't rotate to the middle it looks like he's outright struggling to turn the car let alone get back on the gas that's going to be a massive problem here with everyone about to swallow him up in the midst of his pack. He might not be close to near popping a tire at this rate. Yeah, might do as look at this three wide in towards turn three, turn four. In the background as well, Brewstrom's getting very close to Hefler Listen on the outside of that and try to hold on to that position. So there we are really starting to see the, the back of this train pushing up towards the front. Lap 35 now, we're on in towards turn one and two. And we're certainly seeing some differences in how the drivers have worked their stints. The ones who started fast as Uvin and goes oh. into the wall. That brings everyone down low, but they've been able to avoid. And we're still three wide coming in towards turn three and four we've got Blake Hafflinson trying to hold it on that inside line I think they've just about gotten away with it yeah over then I think's also burned up the right front tire both of those drivers who were one two for so long the right front tire seemed to be near the end of their life cycles here massive difference compared to everybody else in the pack 
Wawen might be the chance for the playoff spoiler, but a lot of these playoff contenders seem to have played this well. Save a little bit early, catch up to them later. Now they're in the conversation. Ubin and saying he needs to pit this time and just barely, I think, found a hole. Yeah, that was lovely how they uh how they worked that one through and we are getting close already to the pit stops and the first one might be that tony uvenen and it is on the inside of turn four he comes to open up the pit stops a little bit earlier than we were expecting the end of lap 36 we are expecting potentially even up to lap 42 or further stage at lap 50 so they now need to work their way in their order how are we going to enter into the pit stop phase and it seems like everyone wants to enter it in that first position as there is Mark Torgman on the inside, just starting to lose these positions now as he went out potentially a little bit too far. Eggman also having a tuck on down indeed. So a lot of these drivers starting to play the undercut game might be good in terms of the stage points to get a jump on some of the cars since we've already had one second of fall off. But here's the thing, Cameron, that's not a lot when you consider it. You're talking about... Just a one second fall off could be the difference between being a contender right now, dropping to the very back. That's not a small margin. That's not a large margin, I should say, to be able to plan out a strategy to jump some drivers here. Yeah, this is uh, opening up the door, I think, nicely over the next couple laps, how the teams are going to fight this. And we are seeing a, ba a breakaway now up towards the front. As the top six have uh, pulled away, the group in behind not able to hold on to this. So it's um, a couple of doors, a couple of windows opening for some drivers to drop into potentially. But let's see how this uh, pit stop sequence is going to go. Lap 39. Lap. Uh, the next lap is the all-important lap 40. In the background, we've seen Solo get past Sherp as well. as in the foreground. Uh, we've seen some side-by-side -side into three and four. This is uh, Ericsson on the inside. Have to listen all the way around the outside. He's trying to go. Uses that momentum nicely onto the uh, front straightaway. It really seems like that midline is good be making the overtakes on the exit is Ericsson though going to fight it diving it down to the inside of turn one and he's going to be holding it there trying to then squeeze the 81 potentially up towards the wall they go but I think the 81 will have the momentum on this back straight yeah but at the same time Ericsson could just make it simple get a side draft corner entry a little bit there even that much is just enough to slow it down wrap the bottom and go from there now here's the major part of this that causes a bit of thinking the 81 remembers not afraid to squeeze we've seen your contact several times you know who wants to go forward though in this pack the bright esports machines they're the race sponsor of course we talked about but drivers like brostrom said quite simply they just want to win and that is the best way of getting through of course if you get a win now you don't really have to worry about richmond next time around you can help your teammates you can do something like that and this is a really good opportunity for these drivers and we were told 40 laps but we're going to be going on to lap 42 so there's definitely a little bit of saving going on in those first few laps as we expected and we might be getting closer and closer to that all-important lap 50. But, of course, we saw Uven and Pitt ages ago, um, already about five laps ago for his pit stop. It's a really big difference in strategy there, but it seems like everyone towards the front is staying out. We still have this six-car breakaway towards the front. And uh, Dan Solo are trying to keep up with his teammates uh, in behind. But this is the onboard view of Oliver Wallen as he works his way through onto lap 43. They remain out once again. Yeah, just trying to go as long as possible. There's been a lot of draft effect, mind you. And in the draft, you save, obviously, a lot more. And essentially, compare that to the front runners. Not only do they burn a lot more tire, it appears, just trying to keep that distance, camera, But also, you're talking about if you're in clean air, you burn up more fuel because you don't have that draft to be able to tug you along. But also, have to go essentially full throttle down the straight. It's almost a super speedway thought process on the fuel mileage here. Yeah, definitely. And it seems to be working because they continue for another lap. And this is great. I love to see um, when these drivers try to stretch the strategy, try and work something a little bit different. Is it going to be enough to stretch all the way to lap 50 to get those, uh, of course, the extra points, the extra bonus points that come with that? That will be so, so crucial uh, potentially later on in the championship, but still just four races remaining after this one to work out the champion, of course. Uh, here we are in the round of 15. Uh, today at Chicago Land, and we go to Richmond in two weeks' time to close out that and get to the top 10 in the championship. And they do remain out once more, so they really were uh, just using the throttle nicely in those first few laps. But no one is now starting to make moves. It seems like it's settled down as everyone potentially is trying to just stretch out that last couple of lap or two. 
And the interesting number when talking about it now, the different update here is 45 to 48. It looks like that has now been updated on the data, first of all. But second thing, second, here's the thing about Chicagoland because I just did the numbers on my end as well to double check that. Because if you do the math essentially from, say, 67, that's the very longest you can go if you've saved a bit to start. You divide that by 80% essentially, that's 53. So guess what? The math could very well barely get in the stage if you play to right, if not be a pit party in the next two laps. Certainly will. And this is uh, looking <laughs> nice. And if we get to a point potentially where they can do it on a two-stop, then that might also be the idea. So it's really um, been a strategic idea and it's going a lot further than we thought. So let's see how this one does. We come out onto the back straight. We've seen a couple of drivers in the wall, the 71 and the 37, all hitting the wall there on the exit of turn two. And they work their way around the final couple of corners. Now, is this the lap <clears throat> or are they going to be going up towards lap 50? They just need three more laps. And Oliver Wallen is looking good. He's got the car length or two advantage up towards the front is working out nicely for him but we do have of course some teammates in here who could potentially work themselves together as they try and get through up towards uh, the front and in fact it's even the, it's the back four of this uh, top six they are all teammates uh, from uh, Blix have listened um, of goodness and of course uh, Ericsson and my bad is in there as well so three of them up there they could push towards the front but they're not getting close enough yet just heard an indication of the radio, possibly a pit stop soon for a couple drivers like Robert Erling and company. So a lot of those at the back are starting to feel tight. Daddy Solo is saying pitting this time on the radio as well. So the pit window is opening up for the second pack. Can the rest of these drivers make it a lap and a half? Surely this is what they're going for. They're aiming for that lap 50. But of course, it's not just lap 50 you have to. You have to then basically go around lap 51 as well because it's the end of 50 where we go across the uh, the stripe and that is where the points are gifted. So let's see how this one goes. Another one and a half miles and it looks like they have been able to stretch it out. They've been playing the strategy game and the top six all go for these extra points. Linus Brustrom looking to the inside already in towards turn number one. Wallen holding it to the midline as we work away through turn two now the 95 is looking racy in the background as well but he needs to try and find the run he's gone to the outside he's forcing Linus Brustrom to the inside line and the 71 has got the momentum the 72 goes wide he goes up high and that might be enough to get the run onto the straight but is it enough around the outside it's going to be a race towards the line we're going to see the 71 coming to the inside line who is it going to be to get the first stage win in the playoffs and it looks like it was Linus Brustrom for Bright Esports in his very own event coming across the line but that will have have to be of course look back on the photographs but actually the 72 uh -oh. has absolutely gone somewhere has he run out of fuel he's Was out he of fuel Wallen's oh, out of no. gas they are running out of gas this time by and this is the point because not only was it allowed 50, but it's 51 you have to do. Only one and a half miles, but is it going to be enough? <laughs> yes, it is. It looks like they're going to have enough in the tank uh, to do so and make it back. But that is a big, big shame for the 72 oh. who's looking good. But of course, he stayed there to make sure oh. that he got the points. Did you not see Blix just ram into the leader, though? He absolutely floored it into the back of the 71 and used him as a brake pedal. Whether that was on purpose or not, we'll find out. But that is certainly, as you say, what happened. And maybe just some games. Look at all the drivers who managed to uh, scrape it through up towards lap 51. Fair play to them. And especially for Brewstrom, that is looking very, very good. But it was a photo finish across the line. And of course, that'll be a confirmed post-race. But the 72 as well, the important factor for him was that if he was in second place, of course, that's taken a couple of points away uh, from some other people in behind. I think it was Blix there in that uh, third place. So definitely big, big uh, team play there um, as they try and work their way through, of course, uh, for Bright Esports. An absolutely huge flip of the script for a couple of these drivers. As to be expected, a bit of an undercut by about 10 seconds here from Hagman and Uvlin. Expect that deficit to go down significantly as the run progresses here already. Now, the major thing too, you're talking about a lot of drivers that just made it clear you can go 49-ish. Indeed, maybe 48 if you want to not run out of gas coming to the end of a grouping of laps. So take a pit stop out of that equation card. Barely. That being considered here, these two have to come in an additional stop compared to everyone else who just pit. 
Yes, yeah, so they got an extra stop. And whilst their gap looks okay, they're not going to have that gap forever because now they are on, you know, 10 lap older tyres than everyone else. So there's going to be a big speed difference here coming in and we are going to see that gap close up in behind. So if, and also if it goes green flag the whole way, then their pit stop time is going to be as long you know, the, the longest that it can be. So this is a, a an interesting game from these guys. They're playing the long game, whereas everyone else is playing the stage game. As we see Uven and coming to the inside there, he was in the wall and missing out uh, on that second place that he was uh, quite a few laps ago now, but also he's fighting for the race lead. So he's still got pace in that 84 machine in his own independent entry and is working out nicely as he takes the front there on that 55. On well, the now it's the matter of making sure the right front keeps itself cool. He was amongst one of the first to have to come down after that tire essentially fell off in the lead. Now, here's an interesting one. You know who's in third on the racetrack? The very first driver in the whole field to pit, who beat these drivers by at least three, four laps on pit stop. The 39 you see on that pylon, that is all Zacharyson, who is currently in there. They were running in the 20s at the top of the pit stop. It's another bright esports academy driver, in fact, who's saying, you know what? I got to try something different. Really going to have to hope for a caution to make the different work here because the pack is closing in fast by at least six tenths a lap. But if there is a caution, it might work out nicely. So it's an interesting game to play to jump you up towards the front. But sometimes maybe some factors that aren't quite going to work. And there is a huge train of cars just on the back end of the shot there that are going to be racing up towards him. And the 39 isn't necessarily a drive we've spoken about too much this season, of course, as you say, being the Bright Sports Academy as they try and, uh, um, you know, use their, their team to, to help the drivers get up towards the front. And, of course, sponsoring this race as well, really involved in this championship. And they gifted a driver a, a strategy to at least have some laps up towards the front and then have the opportunity to battle with those drivers that are going to be coming through up behind him. But look at them. There's that six, seven car train that we saw pit uh, just after the stage. Now, of course, for Zach Arisen, he has been in the top 10 in the finish since Kansas. The thing is, Kansas and Chicagoland share very similar characteristics. Look at this, though, for the drivers in terms of the tire strat. Brostrom making an easy pass. Now it's starting to heat up a little bit. A bit of teamwork, maybe, though, for the Alcantech drivers that are lined up behind. Yeah, this is uh, always a tough one for Leaders Brostrom. It's been the way most of the season. It's all been, uh, you know, 1v3, 1v4 a lot of the time. Um, and I guess the same, actually, for um, Jesper Eriksson at this point in the race. Uh, back at Talladega, he had his teammates around him. Today, he does not. And that's where the Alcantec cars have really, really uh, been strong over the course um, of the uh, of the season so far. Started the season, Eric Blix, of course, got the first race win of the season with Dan Solo pushing him all the way back at Daytona at the Super Speedway. And that obviously continued on, but it looks like Zacherson isn't going to be able to hold on from these guys. There he is on the low line as Brewston goes completely the other extreme to the high line, runs the wall almost through turns one and two and goes around the outside. So the 37 not having the speed at this time. And there is the 37 as well, trying to block off Blixt as they come around the outside. Then I think it's just about worked for now, um, but certainly a tricky time for the 39 who drops down the field. Yeah, that was not a surprise to see that quickly shuffle back. You know who's quickly gaining a lot of time there in all of this, too, is someone who is not on the same cycle, but has crawled the way to the pack. Look at the pylon. The 82, I noticed, Robert Erling. He pit, undercut the field by a couple laps. He's just in the draft. He just needs to hold on to that draft until the next pit cycle. Get at least in the spot where he can equalize. This lap traffic did not help. He just lost the draft trying to figure out a way around him. Yeah, that's uh, not ideal because, as you say, he's going to get the 39, but then he's going to be too far back, which is a bit of a shame for him because then he's going to be potentially uh, sat on his own for a little bit. Um, and maybe, of course, uh, just pitting a little bit earlier. He's got the advantage of the 39, um, but now he doesn't have the advantage of the cars ahead. So that is going to be a tough one for him to get on the back. But it's a, certainly a strong um, strategy once more. So as ever, it depends how the race goes, but you can definitely yeah, gain some places with strategy. And sometimes just got to hope for things like a caution to bunch everyone up and to solidate that position. Uh, solidify, I should say, that uh, 
position up towards the front of the field. We're coming on to uh, lap 63. So closing in on half race distance, Tony Uvin and Marcus Hogman still up towards the front as they have been for pretty much the whole of it, apart from just around that pit stop cycle. And it's looking nice, but the gap it has halved, but it's still over four seconds. So still a decent gap. But that it's halved in 12 seconds, Cam. That's the issue. And it's, again, down to being six, seven, eight tenths off the pace with the tires. The tires just don't have the life in them right now. I think if they... Well, they just got their wish. <laughs> Where is Lewis McGlade when you need him with the commentator's curse? Um, perfect timing there uh, from Justin. As we go, caution... Maybe the 24 involved, one of the uh, superior cars involved as well. Uh, Jesper Eriksson, the 37, your regular season champion, has crashed. And we'll certainly have to find out how that happened. But while the drivers work their way back into formation and the pace truck comes out, we'll take this as an opportunity to get some messages from our partners. finns på över 150 platser i landet och vi har nästan lika många modeller att välja på. Mobi hyrbilar. Hyrbilar som passar dig. And welcome back to Chicago Land. As we are under caution here for the first race of the Bonin Svenska e Racing League's playoff for the 23 24 uh, season. And Jesper Eriksson, your regular season champion, he leads the way. He's 51 points clear of the cut line coming into this race. But he was involved in an incident just a few laps ago that has put us under this situation. After the sort of round of pit stops, it looks like Oliver Wallen is uh, leading the way. Of course, he just ran out of fuel um, as we came into the pit stop cycle. But 10, 15 laps later, and he's been gifted position back up towards the front. So this changes things a lot. We got uh, Uven and Hogman there down in P8, P9. They were leading the way on track before we got into that. And let's see how this one works. Here's the 39 of Jesper Eriksson for Forzi Sports by Morby coming in towards the first corner. And it's a car on the inside line. Was Eric Blix potentially making some contact as their lines are uh, uh, crossed over between the apron and between the, the racing line as well. And then he got stuck a little bit. Um, but that spin there is what caused the caution. And that's certainly a big, big play in this championship. Uh, so, Justin, it certainly shows how... You can be green for so long, but then one little bit of a lapse of concentration from some drivers, a little bit of contact, and it might completely change things. Yeah, this has absolutely flipped the script, to say the least, because first things first, it's still one stop on the gas. We can say that much. But two, I understand the thought process of saving a tire set in case you need it. But there's a certain point where you say, especially if you're 16 laps into a stint, like some of these drivers... Maybe think of the compound of tires. Think about how the fall-off will hurt you in the next 5, 10 laps after the restart. For drivers like Wallen, Schott, Bratberg, Holman, all these drivers are really hoping at least, I think, 
that there's an air caution 15 laps and then cap the advantage on their side because everybody else pit. And even if you're thinking save the set for later, there's no guarantee you will have time to put on that extra set. Yeah, and uh, it seems like the strategy games are being played out this race. We've seen that on, under green flag, and now we're seeing it under caution as well. Some drivers trying something a little bit different, at least. But you see there from the uh, the fourth row back, we've got even in the uh, 84 machines, the sort of black, white, and yellow on the outside line. Then we've got Hogman and uh, Brostrom in behind. Then the all context, we've got Gunnarsson, uh, Hafflinson, Ericsson, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Eric Blix uh, back in there as well. So those drivers now, they're going in towards the midfield. And we're going to be restarting once again at almost the halfway stage uh, in this bright esports arena 350. And they are going to be, of course, leading the way there with uh, Oliver Wallen at the front in the 72 machine who's been brought back into this. But how is it going to work? Because to get to the end, we are still going to need another pit stop. And it's going to be certainly working out for some drivers and it won't be working for some others. Let's see how this one goes as we go back to green flag racing here for the first race of the players. Oliver Wallen with a great restart. We stay two by two uh, coming in towards the first and second corners as those drivers trying to work that outside line that's worked so well already this evening. And we work away now onto the back straight drivers in the wall. Loads of them scraping the wall. They're having to come down low to avoid them as they dive it up the inside of turn three for the first time. That went about as well as I expected for some of them, like Holbaum, who's been towards the teens most of the race into the wall. They're trying to wreck him up the fresh tires. Shockingly, everyone able to hold on to it. But no surprise, anybody who just pit saying, I've got to go. I can use the rest of these drivers as a buffer to run. Hagman, Hogman should say, amongst those doing it very well to already get to fourth and everybody else is stuck in traffic. And the 101 goes to the outside line. The 72 might not be able to hold on to this coming through turn three as uh, Hawkenshot there takes the lead of the race from the 72 as we work our way to start lap 71. Uh, just another lap and a half or so before we get to the halfway point uh, in this stage. We got down to a single file up towards the front, but a few drivers still diving it towards the apron to try and make some moves up there. As, uh, we got uh, quite a few drivers actually overtaking Tony Uven and um, that he was battling around a little bit later. Gunnison and Fredrickson Blix all got past him and of course Marcus Hogan really the the biggest one making the moves diving it to the inside there in that 12 machine this might be a second place actually on the exit if he can try and get that run but we go three wide uh, momentarily off the exit of three in towards four and Hogan is still keeping it on that inside line there so it's gonna be third place it oh, might be part of the pack someone just got tucked around Oscar Fredrickson just making contact and they're stacking big into the grass and on the into turn one and Anton Ullmann there goes down towards pit road, but not for good reasons. He was involved in that. The the uh, 112 there of uh, Fredrickson was involved. Uh, Amelie Fargrill is involved. And also uh, Zacherson there. Is that some huge smoke coming out of the back of that machine? And I definitely think there's a couple of others as we go back to a uh, caution period as we get to halfway through the race. And uh, it's to be expected when we go back in the pack. But let's see how they stack up once more. And if those drivers who stayed out decide to go in the pit this time. Well, I don't know if that's big enough difference to say the very least to say I've got to come in. But at the same time, it's you got to take what's given to you. That being said, I believe the trigger was towards that mid pack. Denny Solo was saying on the radio there were some issues at the time, I believe. And the OK buttons are now being pressed in sim in response. Yes, absolutely. It's going to be a game of the strategic brains coming to this uh, to this next potential pit stop uh, once the, the field all packs up. So as it stands, coming into this, you've got uh, Wallen Schott, um, Marcus Hogman, Skoggle and Bratberg inside your top five. They've got Holmer in, Blix, Gunnison, Brostrom and Irvin. And here's what happened as there's going to be some contact halfway down the straightaway and that just uh, ping-ponged up to the right-hand side. Unfortunately, that was Anton Ullmann who was caught there. Then a couple of cars, unfortunately, uh, caught further in the background. There's uh, Zacherson spinning into his far grill. Can't quite see who the other car was uh, in that foreground getting involved. So about five or six cars involved there just from some contact. But it's so weird there's halfway down the straight. But I guess as uh, you're always turning left here, it's, uh, it's certainly a tricky one in the contact. It just has to be so minimal to cause a spin. And I don't know if it was because of, I think there was a tech issue there for the 12 machine at the time that played a small factor in it. But at the same time, it's like 
You can't just say, oh, car to the inside. They're going to just use the apron. The problem is the apron's not really that great. Again, we just talked about if you're in a truck, you can use it a ton. But in these next gen cars, you're basically asking for you to burn up your tires if you're down that low. And it's uh, it's part of the risk and reward. You sometimes you see an opportunity like that and think that it's going to make it better in the short term. But, of course, it's the long term um, risk and potentially being involved in an accident, potentially uh, with the tire wear, as you're saying. And, uh, of course, these are race, uh, race drivers. They see the opportunity and they go for it. Um, it looks like everyone, of course, uh, staying and following the pace truck around, um, which is going to be uh, to be expected. They're sticking with that strategy. They don't want to be going back to the back of the line. Um, so they're going to be staying there. And Oliver Wallen will once more be getting us uh, underway when we go back to the uh, the green flag. But I just wonder, um, Justin, with obviously the, the amount of laps that we have to go left, uh, 70 laps, how the drivers are going to focus this because it seems like throughout this race um everyone's always been wanting to get towards the front even though there's a bit of saving in that first stint it seems like everyone wants to lead today they, maybe that's why there's a you know a couple of these accidents have started to come i mean everybody wants to lead no matter the racetrack it all it feels good to be the race leader but there is a big circumstance not just in terms of leading laps being able to get clean air it's also in the chance of being in the pack dirty air you burn up more tires you end up having to lift a bit more the difference in tires we've touched upon over the time has shuffled a bit but the average still was around 10 percent no matter how you slice it no matter what car with the tire model also you're talking about where we already seen if you're the leader and you have a lot of fighting behind there is a chance you can break away for a bit we already seen that come into play. So again, the thought is you control your own destiny being the leader. You don't have to fight, fight, fight in the midst of dirty air behind that. And you get to essentially, again, lead laps. Being the leader is a good thing. Oh, well, it certainly is. Um, it's just, I was just thinking back to a couple of the other races we've done recently. I guess that we have had a couple of super speedways um, in the last few races, uh, potentially uh, changing that. But it seems like drivers are more happy to uh, sit behind. Whereas today, um, every time that we're seeing the door open up on the inside or even on the outside lines, drivers have been trying to make it work. Um, but then I guess this is the playoffs and each round, unlike in real life where we have three races, we only have two for each stage of the playoffs, uh, which means that you don't have that many opportunities. And uh, also for the other drivers, they, in some ways, is actually better not being in the playoffs because then you can just go for absolutely everything with no uh, care in the world. You're just going for race wins and for podiums at this point. And potentially for someone like uh, the 72 here of Oliver Wallen for Bright Esports, he wants to win their very own race, the Bright Esports 350, which will be getting back underway as the pace truck will be pulling to the left-hand side. And our 2x2 two two formation will form up once more before we go back to the green flag. Last time, the 72 got a really, really big jump. Is it going to be the same this time around as the 101 of Hawk and Shot will be on that outside row? And as we get to the restart zone, there he goes for the 72. And actually, Hawk and Shot is trying to move down to the inside line. He might be able to get there, but he's decided to actually keep it up high to try and block the run uh, in behind him as they come through uh, turn number one and two for the first time around. The car's staying in a nice formation. Is there going to be anyone trying trying to make any crazy moves three wide it seems on towards uh, this back straight and all into the wall there actually goes Marcus Hogman. I think that might be trying to uh, keep that second place he's riding the wall Ross Chastain style that's not how you do it on a track like this though yeah that's a good way to break your axle and that's a good way for Hagman to go straight to the very back that is disaster for his playoff chances already and that has already opened up the door for Wallen to just run 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 that's exactly what we've seen early on thing is it's still three wide, and you still have drivers checking up because they're getting very tight here. Oh, so it seems superior cars in the wall in the exit turn two, really starting to, to push now. So look what the drive's going up towards the high line as well. It does seem to work here. You get that momentum onto the straights, but of course you lose a little bit in the corners. So it's all about that give and take as they work their way uh, through the trial. Let's see a few cars deciding to go down towards the apron as well, trying to cut off that extra tenth of a second. And of course the risk is then when you come back over the bumps. Oh, is, was that some contact, some smoke coming up? But at least, oh yes it is, because cars are around in the background. There's three, four, 
five cars involved and we go back to our third caution period in the last 20 or 30 laps. Oh, that's a big one because Ericsson is in it and Ericsson's lost the motor. That is a championship destroyer for this round for many. Home bomb in it, many of the Ford's cars in it. Linus Brostrom in the midst of it. You're talking about at least several playoff drivers with mandatory repairs from that one crash. And this is exactly why drivers said we need to get the win. We don't want to worry about Richmond. And guess what? Your championship favorite has to worry about Richmond. Certainly does. The gap is looking good, but depending on who wins the race, who gets themselves up inside, especially those top five or positions or so, that is going to be a big, big thing. Um, so Marcus Hogan, he had a meatball, and uh, it looks like, um, as you're saying, Justin Shirt um, made some contact, but that was the initial thing. Then about a lap later, we then saw a huge crash there uh, coming through turns one and two. There's already smoke just off camera and unfortunately catching out some of the biggest names. So yes, Ericsson, he was already involved in one crash. There comes a second, but is this all because he struggled a bit in qualifying and he's been in the pack all day? Let's see this coming through in towards turn one. Yeah, oh, there's some contact already in the background. Uh, Lee's Brewstrom hit the back, one of the fours drivers, and that is what caught up um, with one of the other drivers. And yes, Ericsson coming in behind, just not being able to stop in time. So there was a, a multitude of incidents happening there. Obviously, there was the initial tag, but it looks like it was Brewstrom, uh, unfortunately, making contact with the Fours driver. Yeah, try to get to the inside. Problem is, the inside line was essentially starting to arc down, and Brewstrom is the bottom we've seen. And that's going to be a major part of this championship now because you're talking about drivers like Ericsson who were back there in a spot where they couldn't avoid. For many of the others, I think that's part of the reason like Marcus Hagman saying, you know what, maybe I should try and get in the race because he had parked at Cameron about two laps ago. Guess who just walked back in with his garage pass to try and fix the rest of the car? <laughs> well, I guess you might as well keep going and see how the race progresses, see what um, uh, yeah, carnage you can cause for some other drivers just by the fact of being on the track. Um, so that is a good one. Not completely giving up just yet, but of course that's going to be a difficult position um, with the uh, just the repair times uh, many, many laps down. I'm sure he will be by that point. So let's see how that one works out. But we go back to another caution. And is this what the race is going to be? Uh, Justin, between now and the end, is it going to be five, ten laps in caution or are we going to settle down like we did at the beginning? I think intensity level is going to pick up, if anything, with what we just seen, because you're talking about an narrow strategy roulette. Difference of five laps yet again on tires, because as we've seen, drivers like Omen and company selected to come to in many of them for damage. And now this shuffles for the first time all day. Gunnarsson to the front. You're talking about now it's Alcantech domination up at the front. The top three coming into play. We talked about teamwork. Guess what? The teamwork now can make their dream come true. And Dan Solo in fifth place. So four cars up towards there. This is working out quite nicely for their rival team's event, the Bright Esports Arena 350. But it is Alkentech 1, 2, 3 and 5 at this moment in time. They are looking very nice indeed and some big names uh, down there in the, uh, in the pit lane uh, getting some repairs as well. Um, so in the pit lane right now, we've got Sherp, uh, Fredrickson, Hogman, Ericsson, and Linus Brewstrom. Uh, Dan Holmer, I think he's been in. He's come back out. Unfortunately, Lucas Holmer, I think, has uh, dropped out from the race. So we were looking really good in terms of keeping all the drivers running, the 29 that started. Uh, but now some of those drivers are going to be, uh, yes, struggling a little bit. But, of course, the points are the important factor. So staying in the race and getting those extra points is going to be a big, big factor um, for these drivers. Lap 83, uh, we are on now. Gunnison Blix, Havilton leading the way, but big drivers down the bottom. And of course, we still have the strategy to come because we still need another pit stop um, to the end of this race. Um, you know, even, uh, you know, for these drivers who um, pit latest. And now this is also to the point, too, where who's going to have what sets available? Who's got banker sets available once we get to that later stage? This is where we were talking about the differences and what drivers were hoping for and what they wanted to see. And you're also considering, too, you now have a damage 
clock race, essentially, where a lot of the drivers are trying to fix as much damage as possible, see if there's any spots they can keep or jump. You're talking about very nervous times for a couple of these drivers here who are going to be towards the bubble or still on the bubble entering today and not having the race they need. For others, all they need to do is survive another 62 laps and they can take a breath. Yeah, so the, for the drivers around the bubble um, coming into this race, so we'll get to that in a moment's time, because of course we go back to green flag racing, and it is Gunnison uh, taking us away, and that was a really nice start as, oh, we're getting some almost three wide already, as we're not even in towards turn one, there's a bit of a run, huge run there from the outside, by Lundberg trying to make his way through on uh, Tony Uvenham, as we see the uh, Orkintec already getting into a one, two, three, four, as there's been a bit of a terrible run there, and we're still three wide in towards turn Turn number three, though, we go, and that uh, potentially could cause some carnage as the drivers try to work their way up. There. Oh, yeah, it ha uh, has done, because there's some contact. Are they able to save it? As I think as Limbo wasn't quite able um, to get around the corner. A bit of contact, but somehow saving it. We go four wide for a moment, and that was almost another caution. Further contact is made coming in towards turn one, but again, all the cars remain going in a straight line. They're trying very hard not to go in a straight line and not to keep the sheet metal straight on the race cars, I will say, with how they're racing. Bratberg, that is a massive squeeze. He's lucky he didn't turn the 0-13 up there. Oh, is this? They're wiggling about a little bit. They've got to be careful. More little bits of contact and scraping. You see the cars just wiggle left and right, but they somehow, again, keep going around the racetrack. And we need to be careful here with this uh, 111 machine because he seems to be just ever so slightly um, out of uh, out of comfort at this moment in time. He's now got Hawkins shot squeezing up to the up to the wall, um, but they continue on. And this is certainly sketchy times, but it seems like they have spread out just enough that they should be able to uh, get away with this now. Now. But uh, yeah, tough times for these drivers trying to get back up to racing speed. Yeah, a lot of conversations starting to build up in terms of the near contacts already building in terms of this restart. Can't shot him on still saying, I got to make some passes here. We know how fast that car can go. And this comes down again, the tire wear differences. You're talking about drivers like Bratberg on very old rubber. He's nearly at the time he needs to pit here, mind you. That's how long that car's been trying to stretch the strategy. And that is why, as you say, he's in this situation. So interesting times there to take that risk because even... So if, what, what do we need? We need about another seven laps or so if he's going to be making it to the end. And uh, is he going to be able to do that? It looks like he... Uh, actually, no, he should be able to do that. So that's what he's staying out for. The issue is he's around drivers who are on much, much, um, yeah, fresher tires and in a better situation. So he's just going to be losing time the whole way until that pit stop. By the way, just received word from Heckman in terms of what happened in that wall contact. Apparently, when he went up in the wall, it not only caused an issue, of course, being in the wall, he also had a wheel disconnect with brand new equipment that ended up causing him being stuck in the wall cam. That is so disappointing. It did, to be fair, it did look like something like that because I, yeah, I'm not sure why, um, you know, you'd ride the wall for the amount of time they did. Even if the wheel was still working, you'd turn left and, you know, brake and you'd get off the wall. But he just kept on riding it for so long. There was obviously a further issue there. We thought it was some damage, maybe to the steering arm, but no. Uh, it was some hardware failure on his oh, end. On back his straight rig. away. 13 oh. nearly turned in front of the pack. That could have been a big, big thing. Again, if we saw the uh, the car spinning like that, the 13 is Dan Solo for Alkentech. But he's obviously saved it because we are going in a straight line and we are continuing on. But it looks like up towards the front, the front uh, three have stayed pretty calm. We've got uh, Anton Neumann now, who's worked his way up. He's a... Uh, done a good job there to get himself up back in behind his teammates uh, Tony Uvenin in behind Skogland uh, Lumber Kenneth Tear up inside the top 10 and there is Dan Solo who's lost out uh, potentially with that this pack is starting to implode here because remember the Alcantec and HR supremacy I think a lot of the drivers are starting to fall off here you have Danny Solo with some troubles you have drivers like Wallen that are charging that just fell down the pylon in down the front straightaway at least two incidents, believe, just happened in the span of about half a lap. Somehow, we stay green. Wallen 
absolutely crushed on the front nose. That is going to hurt him. In fact, how is this not mandatory repair? The nose is inside the motor and the air filter, and the nose is about to fall off. And he's so, so, so. Let's uh, see this um, coming through. He's going to be riding up a little bit. Is there going to be uh, some further contact? Bouncing off the wall there. A lot cr across the front straight away. Well, cars to the left, cars to the right. And surely there's going to be some uh, further contact. There's Arrowed Simba. Look, he's already slow at this point. Um, so actually the damage must have already been had. And he is coming down pit road to uh, do those repairs. Because even if he continued on, and he could continue on, he's just so slow, he might as well... Uh, take those repairs. I think it was that was might have been the contact with the 13, maybe because that's the only other contact of the racetrack before that is said moment for Wallen. That's absolutely frustrating, and it's pretty clear when I'm surprised he didn't get the black and orange flag there for the fact his nose was dragging. Here's what I was talking about this broke up the pack here. He was coming up very close to the side draft of the quarter paddles throughout this run. What a save! And also from the Team Superior car who had to avoid that. That was a huge, huge save there. And very lucky for both drivers, I would say, to not be involved in a wreck. And we do continue on with 50 laps to go here at Chicago Land, the first race of the playoffs. And we are still yet to have our final pit stop. And we're still yet to find out who's going to be leading the way on that strategy. Got Alkentec, uh, one, two, three, five. We've got Tony Uvenen, who's been so fast, despite not being a playoff driver, he's really getting involved. And of course, some other drivers as well. Continuing on with the issues, we've still got Horgman, Fredrickson, and uh, Ericsson all in the pit lane for Fours Esports, involved in a huge crash a little bit ago, as it's Alkentec who lead the way rather nicely. Yeah, they are starting to get into rhythm, especially when it comes to Gunnarsson. half Wittison has been very fast all throughout this campaign. That being considered here, you know what? This is, again, not just in terms of the team thought that just comes to mind here. I'm thinking about how you're talking about now four, in fact, five of the top six are all teammates here. They can essentially control a good portion of the playoff spots heading into Richmond because of all this, and especially with the fact that the 13 is already back to six and leaning pack two. Yeah, this is <laughs> working out nicely for them, and I do wonder at some point, would they yeah, kind of decide what position the people were finishing, or is this first race of the playoffs just get it on the board? Um, but you never know. Tony Uvin is looking fast as well. It might not be so easy for them as he's getting a bit of a run. Of course, he's got past Blix now in that P3. And he's looking very good to have a challenge on these top two drivers. As we get onto lap 98 in the background, Lundberg has got solo. So not uh, completely easy uh, for the Alton Tech cars. But I really am um, liking the to back the 84 machine, who's looking good. And of course, is on the uh, the same uh, the same stint length now due to the caution. Urban is having one of the best races I think we've seen from that machine all season. In fact, talking about Uvenin, entered this bracket essentially just four spots out of a playoff spot. He looked good at tracks like Charlotte this season. Las Vegas, a part of the doubleheader, he finished in the top three. The thing that's really hurt that car all season, getting to the front and qualifying. Uvenin, mind you, today had his best ever qualifying spot this season, and it's kind of showcased if he could get a hot lap down more consistently, he could be a front runner in future seasons. And it does show you that despite the uh, the format, of course, with the cautions and with the long races, qualifying still does matter because it just shows that you have speed. Because if you're fast, then you're fast. And that is really uh, the best way to, to win races. And he certainly got the speed today. Has the 84 machine. He's got the 81 of Hafnerson uh, pushing him through up towards uh, Hafnerson's teammate of the number one reigning champion. But is he going to be still the champion in a few weeks' time? Ericsson is looking good, but he's really struggling. Is he back out? Yes, Ericsson and Hogman are back out on the track. But, of course, many, many laps down. 17, 15 and 17 laps down. Um, absolute um, you know, disaster for them. But still trying to pick up the points that they can as we're now over the 100 lap mark and quickly counting down towards that final pit stop. Yeah, those pit stops expect them in the next probably 10 to 15 laps-ish. It's going to take a little bit of time, yes, but 
I think we just had somebody blow up on the apron. This may be a trouble spot for a caution because slow on the track, the 11. Dennis Sharp has blown up on the apron. Nasakar, who's 25 laps down, who's involved in one of those cautions um, a few laps ago. And unfortunately, despite having the uh, the damage repairs, it seems maybe having some further issues in this race. As you say, um, yeah, he's going to be dropping out once again. The only other driver got out of the race completely is uh, Lucas Holmeren, as uh, everyone else is, is continuing on despite the damage. Uh, but Sherp has made it back to, uh, to the pit lane and will potentially be out of this race. Um, so that's lucky that it wasn't a caution for the uh, for the slow car, but we do continue on with Gunnison uh, still leading as we got uh, this pack in behind who's still battling is allowing this top four to have a, or top five, I should say, just to have a little bit of a gap. And talking about the playoff seeding coming in now, you know who's at the very bottom, your race leader. Gunnarsson was actually one of two drivers not to start with 2,000 even in terms of those who haven't gotten wins, haven't had the most luck per se for the postseason. This can really shuffle those brackets coming in. With the way things have gone, you're talking about drivers like Hagman getting below the cut line. You're talking about drivers that needed good runs, not getting them. Like Oscar Fredrickson was the very last seed. He's had a horrific day. He's going to need a win himself. Robert Erickson, he's going to need a win now. You're talking about drivers like Skoglin. Right now, he is amongst those who look solid earlier on, but has kind of become very quiet in the 12th position. Basically, everybody except for Gunnarsson, who needed to do well or race up front today, hasn't raced up front today or has been in a crash. And that is what happens in these uh, playoff conditions. You know, you have to get yourself towards the front and you can't be getting yourself caught up in these things. And the best way of doing that is, of course, getting to the front uh, of the pack. And that is what these all contact cars have done. And that is why they're going to be considering uh, consolidating their position inside that playoff. But obviously it's not over for those other drivers. They do have that second race in a couple of weeks as this is getting messy in the background of the shot. Uh, the couple of drivers there laps down uh, getting involved. But um, yeah, certainly when we get to Richmond, short track is going to be a tough one for those drivers. But you never know because obviously the uh, opportunities will come their way um, when we uh, when we get to, uh, to that race. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of cautions, a lot of strategy uh, going their ways. Dan Solo is uh, coming down pit road. Bratberg as well, uh, as we have uh, just shy of 40 laps to go. Bratberg, mind you, was 55 laps to a stint, 41 for Danny Solo. So the window is open, I think, for the Alcantech machines. As a matter of fact, 82 indicating pit stop this time. Expect a lot of more drivers to come in very soon here. If you already have the calls coming through for the mid-pack. This is uh, this is the, uh, the front gates opening. Um, I, especially with the caution, I would expect us to go possibly even another 10 laps if they really want to stretch it. And remember, the longer they go now, the less fuel they need to take and the fresher tyres they will have at the end. So um, it is still a good opportunity to try and uh, run their way through. And as you see, for instance, like with Wallen there going past, uh, fresh tyres are going to be very beneficial, but they're going to lose some seconds now. So I think we're going to get a very, very tight fight. Uvenen comes down pit road. Um, but I do think we're going to get a very, very tight fight in that last 10 laps or so as we see all these um, strategies merging up towards each other. Can't wait to see how this is going to, uh, to work out. Lap 109 coming up to 35 to go. Now, here's the thing, though, about that point on take less fuel. Here's the thing. With the balance of these cars here, if you had the chance to, you ha might have to make an adjustment to try and counteract that. In a fixed race like this, that actually makes you tighter because you can't counteract that. Now with the pit stops for your race leaders outside of Halfley in, it's going to be the question too. Do we even see a two-tire stop become prevalent because of that fuel mark? Because that is a common strat to save a couple seconds we've seen all season. Yeah, potentially. And this stint wasn't quite as long as I was expecting. So maybe they still have a bit of fuel in the tank, which would... Uh, uh, potentially shorten it even more. So this is going to be the time for the drivers who want to take potentially some risks with the final um, part of the race. Of course, there's only 30 seconds a lap around here. So the 30 laps remaining will go by very, very quickly. So not a lot of time for these guys to 
uh, to do it. And of course, being the final pit stop, this is their final opportunity on the strategy. Hafley stays out though, a little bit longer than his teammates, as you say, doing something a bit different. Is he going to be having a run on them at the end? Is these uh, extra few laps going to be important in terms of the tire life? Well, the interesting thing is he's only had seven tenths to fall off in general. Last time by a 31.4, that is three tenths quicker than everybody else on his stint. I think he's in a comfortable spot. Not obviously going to be in the front positions to start off the next run, but is going to be in an opportunity to be able to attack and be able to capitalize because the others won't have as much rubber to defend. The rest of these drivers, though, you're talking about, say, Hakan Shot. You're talking about Stiller. Frogrell, you're talking about Skoglin, Bjorn Brostrom, are amongst those who can go an extra 10 to 15 more laps on this run because they pit on later cautions. Those drivers, I think, might be red cards in this tier too. The downside to them is none of them picked up track position during the entire run here, despite having fresher rubber. And is that going to be a sign that they're not going to be able to do the same in the final 10 laps or so? But of course, they're going to be losing some time with the undercut as well. So it's really going to be one of those ones where everything's going to come back together. Um, we're going to see which strategy is the best. And I'm surprised to see such a big difference between the teammates here with the 81 staying out so long. Um, but there must have been a slight difference in the pit stop during the uh, one of the cautions that we uh, didn't quite see. Or maybe it is him just trying something different himself compared to those teammates. Because, uh, as I mentioned, they did pit a little bit earlier than I was expecting, but he's going to be slowing down there. Is that going to be uh, the lap? No, he's, he's going to be continuing on once more. So he's really going to have a lot shorter pit stop. In the background, Lundberg uh, comes down pit road. And I'm, I'm feeling good, actually, for the 81 to be challenging. I think I am, too, because of this late run speed. This is going to make him a potential threat for the race win in general on the fresher tires here because he won't have as much fall off burn later maybe but in general i'm also thinking but it most of the drivers behind him have already indicated like erlson this time by pit stops have to be coming a can shot already saying pit stops are coming i think oh we have trouble down to the pit road entry a spin oh and that brings out the caution and this is going to change things as we are in that pit stop cycle of course, the 81 has stayed out. He won't be able to pit right now. The drivers who have pit will come up behind. So this could actually not be the nicest of situations there for the 81 Alcantec drivers. We get to 30 laps remaining in the race. The strategy was just heating up. And now it's just taken another twist. And we still don't know which one is going to be the best. The 81, though, I do feel might have just slightly lost out from this. I think he actually won out big time because guess who is trapped the lap down? Every single car who just pit. Ooh, that is true. I didn't quite see that. You are right. There's only 11 drivers on the lead lap. And that is a good spot because potentially, as you're right, this is actually going to work out for Hafley. And despite going against all his teammates, we were mentioning how many all cars are up towards the front. He defied all of them. He did something different, and it might just uh, work out. He was able to get um, a race victory uh, not too long ago. Get a couple of race victories, I should say, over the last few rounds. He had a bit of a struggle towards the beginning of the season, but then he's come back to it, and now he's going to be trying something a little bit different, as he is going to be coming down to pit road uh, along with a couple of drivers in behind. You know who's second and was the only driver on his same tire cycle left? F40, Johansson. So a fellow teammate and may or may not be family member based on the first name of that said driver, getting the chance to be able to work together and now they can dictate the tempo of the pack as a group for the AM racing side of the branding. So keep that in mind. You have the NHR team itself and the Fords, but an AM racing machine in Johansson now can potentially help the 81 the rest of the way up front. It's funny how these uh, how these races work, how the strategies flip flop, how the driver decisions make a big, big change to the race. And as he, of course, comes out, will uh, still be in the race lead, uh, virtue of those drivers being a lap down who pit earlier. So the 81 is looking very good. And also look at the drivers in behind, not necessarily drivers who you're going to be looking for 
um, in the uh, in the championship standings. Of course, uh, six out of the seven cars in behind, all non-playoff drivers, which is a big, big thing. Before we get down to Gunnarsson in now P9, who's going to be on the uh, on the fifth row, uh, coming back. Um, to the restart. So this is certainly a, uh, a funny one, but it is working the way of the 81 uh, virtue of him taking that risk and staying out. And especially since a lot of those drivers in the championship conversation are either in the case of Gunnarsson, the lucky dog, or in most of the field cases going to have to take the wave around. I don't know unless there's an air caution, they will have a chance to be able to defend or let alone try and catch up to on older tires up to 10 laps on the stints. That being said, you know who it can gain big from this? Your next run is playoff, highest playoff driver in Skogland, who's right now still in the top five in one of the bright esports machines. In fact, he is the only other driver outside of Aronson who finally enough brought out the caution flag to be on equal tires now to the 81. This is, uh, this is working out well, because if he can get in front of a few of those other drivers who are non-playoff drivers, then the points gain, um, of course, will be even more. Um, you know, if he puts cars in between him and the rivals behind, but then is there going to be a tire, um, a tire advantage? No, probably not, because then he's going to be on the fresh tires as well. So it is working out very nice uh, for them to hold on to these positions to the end. And it is going to be about a 25 lap stint but will there be further cautions to change the story once more? And to be honest, with how this season's gone, I would expect that. Mm -hmm. I was about to say, though, now you also talk about, though, there's a big chance we still get in our caution here because a lot of these drivers taking the waiver on right now. Some of them are on pretty old rubber. All it takes is one driver to get loose and we again have more problems and there goes that advantage and i as you say i wouldn't be surprised if that happens so that's going to be in the back uh, of the mind of these drivers towards the front but they're only going to be looking forward and that's they're only going to be thinking about how do we get my race car to the checkered flag first that's all they are going to be thinking about so the situation is of course we've got um have listen you handsome they're going to be starting on that front row. Then we've got all of the drivers who are not really inside the playoffs, now inside the top 10. Then we have to go down to Linus Brustrom in P9, Arrington P10, Gunnison in 11th place, Blix in 13th, Solo and Uvenen 14th and 15th place. Um, some big names who now have quite a few positions to jump up. And it's going to be a 25 lap shootout to the end. Is it going to be green flag racing? We've already had about four or five cautions in this race. Is there going to be one more? Or are we going to see the 81 storming to an amazing race victory? Let's go green flag racing once more for the Bright Esports Arena 350 here at Chicago Land. And what a start that is from the 81 machine. Left everyone sleeping. Still have got a good run. And Johansson's dropped down two places because Scotland's followed him through as well. Rickard Allard in fifth place. Going to be challenging. Has to come onto the back straight with three wide. Though, as we see the drivers using this opportunity to try and make some moves. Still lots of drivers with problems. Wallen had a black flag from the initial start. Others three wide at the heart of the field. Much calmer for the 81, I will give them credit. Not going to be calm too long, though, with the way they're racing in that big backdrop. Yeah, this is going to be intense racing for the last 20 or so laps. We've all seen Brewster make a couple of places. Gunnison and Blix following through. Um, Uven and Solo, they're all making some positions uh, one by one, slowly working their way up the field. As the 81 has got a nice half a second gap, four tenths of a second gap already, looking very calm towards the front. Of course, he's on fresh tyres as well, so there's no issues with that. And we've only been basically a half stint to the end. He should be absolutely fine to push these tyres. As in the background, we've almost got to single file, but the, some of the drivers still work, moving around, trying to make some places. Um, Aronson there gets Allard um, to work his way up. So slowly but surely, the non-playoff drivers are sort of losing their places inside that top 10 as they uh, drop further and further back with some, uh, some fast drivers coming through. And uh, these positions are going to be important for these drivers in the playoffs as well. Every one of these points is going to count. You talk about the potential spoilers, though. You know who's still in second on the list? That 0-1-3. 
That is Marcus Stiller, the only driver in the entire field not to set a qualifying time. Started dead last in the field, 29th to second. And he's actually doing a solid job playing defense really for your race leader right now with the way it's shaping up. <laughs> you gotta love that when these drivers outside of the championship, he's also down in 42nd place in the championship is Marcus uh, still in the overall championship of the regular season coming into this race. But it's drivers like this who will take some points away, maybe even grab a race win um, in the playoffs. Um, and that is going to change things very, very uh, massively as we get to 20 laps to go. And have listen, just slowly but surely opening up that gap. I'm um, up towards seven tenths now, but look at the cars coming in behind. We've got, um, we got uh, Bruce Jim there in that sixth place in the bright eSports machine. He's working his way through. Gunnison is following with Blix as well. And I do think they're going to be there, but is there going to be enough time to catch Halfley if we go green to the end? But the way it's looking with 20 laps to go, I think they will get close. I don't know how who's going to be able to one to catch them. That being considered, Skoglin, I think, is amongst those who, if they can get by, might have a shot. And hold on, they're trying to wreck it! They certainly are, as I think still has been turned there. Is that going to be a caution coming out? Still has dropping down the way. Yes, it is. 20 laps to go. Caution comes back out. There's three cars wiggling around. I think Skoglund is involved potentially. But in the end, it was still at the 013. We were just saying how uh, good of a race he was happening. And unfortunately, he gets turned. It definitely did look like it was him initially causing the contact. But we have to see again uh, once more if it, uh, if it was him uh, just moving down. But certainly, there was some, some wiggles happening there on the exit of turn two. I think Johansson as well, one of the cars. What is left is Aronson up in P2. Then we have Johansson Gunnarsson in your second row and then Bruce from Blix in your third uh, and this is changing things once more and now advantage wave around cards for the tire stints if they have a set available I think it comes down simply remember we've seen how tight it is wall-to-wall -wall contact if one driver slips up one driver doesn't get up to the wall one car doesn't run near the wall to be able to get a proper line and the others aren't expecting that I think that can cause a lot of trouble and guess what I think that might have just caused a lot of trouble. Once we get the look, I think the good way to see will be the 52. Because he was the third car in line, mind you, Cam. And I'm pretty certain that's where it got squirrely. Yeah, because the, the worst part is when someone goes up into the wall, the natural reaction is then to jink back down left as well. But when you have these jinks left and right, that is what causes the, uh, the chain reaction. Because there's always a slight um, delay, obviously, in the reaction. Um, so then the cars sort of move, and then and then there's a half second gap, and then they move, and then they're wiggling left and right. And it's just these little bits, just you know, a few inches left and right, potentially. It doesn't even have to be a whole car width. And just a few inches here and there. And that will definitely change, uh, you know, change the path of the car enough uh, to make some contact with how close the racing is here. But lap 128, we're going to have about a 15 lap dash to the end, of course. No one realistically is going to be making the, the pit stops now inside these top 10. They're just going to be uh, staying to the end uh, to try and fight for this race win. But I do like Aronson there. In the 24, he's been uh, in the wars today. He's had uh, uh, an accident here or there, but he's up in that second place and he's also looking pretty racy. Yeah, just dodged all the chaos in the head of that main group. And now, it's funny how this works, right? He brings out the caution that keeps him on the lead lap, somehow. From what I understand and what I picked up on, he welded up in time to not fall lap down to the pace truck. He still has a chance to win it because of his own mistake. Funny how things work. Yes, it's, uh, it's been done before. Um, not just uh, in this series, but uh, in others as well. With the, the way the caution works, it, uh, it just brings everyone back together. So it means that you can have some minor issues and still be there. You just have to make sure you're always doing the the thing that's going to obviously improve your uh, your position. And I think that's why what you said earlier, Justin, when we were discussing it, that's why the drivers always want to get towards the front. They always want to be bettering their position um, because you never know what opportunities are going to be uh, coming your way. But we're all lined up a single file once more behind the pace truck for a final dash towards the end of the race. And... 
we shouldn't be uh, worried about the uh, about the time left of the race because we uh, it's been such a fast uh, such a fast race today. I think we should be plenty of uh, time okay, even if we get another caution or two to the end. But the interesting bit here will be if we finish under green or if we get some cautions in the last few laps as the tyres wear off and the playoff drivers try and go for those last few points. Well, I think we already know people are going to go for the points, but it's more so does it stay green in that regard. Pretty clear the give and take is starting to reduce now that we're within, but it's time to get back going, 15 laps to go. It's already been reducing since it's within 40 laps to go. That's kind of just the natural progression once you're inside a mark to make it on gas it's time to go crazy sometimes it's points paying time now there is the outlier i'm thinking about on strategy a couple of them in fact you have joe hansen who has at least a set in the pits you have blix with the set at least in the pits have Whittison and errolson with the set in the pits at least as well you only have a can shot Erling, and that's about it who have been in the pits just three times today I don't know if they're going to be able to use that set, and that was why I was talking about because some of the drivers earlier, when they chose not to use a set, the question became, was there going to be enough time later to use a set? The answer is very likely not unless it turns into a 14-lap run. And I guess that's sometimes just the, the game you have to play because when you're on lap... Um yeah, uh, 20, 30 of the race, and you're making that decision of um, how much food you're going to save when you're going to make that first pit stop. You don't know what's going to happen in 100 laps time. But what happened was the caution came out. And what it leaves us is with a 15 lap dash to the end of the race that Michael Hafnerson gets us underway for. And Aridson there in that second place is going to jump down to the inside line to cover that one off and follow him through. And once again, the 81 getting a huge run towards the front as we restart hopefully this final run in the Bright Esports Arena 350. Loads of moves already being made in the mid pack as they try and work their way towards the front for their final few opportunities of this race. As it leaves us with five playoff drivers in the top five, Linus Brewstrom is looking strong in the back ground of this as well but of course it's the three all contexts inside that top four and the one fours of the 24 machine all going for the win what a job to be able to get all the damage repaired though when it comes to 71 i'm shocked that latest is still in the conversation despite having all the front end damage now errolson though has a great chance the closest he's gotten to the lead in a bit in fact closest anyone's gotten to the leader for a chance to build up the run and talking of close, Johansson was very close to uh, ping-ponging there back into the path of some other people. Huge bounce off the wall. But let's see this run here for the 24 coming on. He goes to the right-hand side to try and use that momentum. Coming back to the left, maybe. As we were three or four wide in the background. Uh, as we wrestle inside the top 10 there, Dan Solo, uh, Johansson, Allard, all involved in that one. Um, but they continue on racing as Ullman as well. He's making some nice places. Unfortunately, Johansson, after starting P2 and one of the restarts, is now outside of the top 10. And as it's now just a game time for these drivers. Flat out to the finish, going as fast as you can. The 24 there just running up a little bit wide mid corner. Does he keep the momentum? I think he does. Brewstrom in the background also using that momentum on the outside line. has worked well for a few drivers trying to get blixed. And every pass for the lead today, I've kept track of this, even amongst some of the strategy in terms of even drivers swapping after 10 laps, in terms of long green flag runs. Almost in fact, just about every pass today for the lead from the bottom of the racetrack. Erlson needs to find a way to get to the inside. That's the pretty straightforward answer. If he can't get inside, he's not going to get the run. He's already knocking the wall down again. Yeah, he's pushing, isn't he? And that is what we love. He's doing everything that he can, but he's got to keep it inside those limits because he doesn't want to lose out on a potential race win opportunity. Now there's still 10 laps to go to try and make something work. He's going to the left. He's going to the right. He's trying to now stay in that draft in towards turn three. Goes half a car higher than Hafley. It's another. They now drop down hard to that inside line. As you say, I think if Hafley just holds this inside line, it's going to be a very difficult opportunity for because he's going to have to take so much risk to try and make this stick but also they need to look in the mirrors because the number one machine of Gunnison is going to be looking at something at some point too and with us now at that 10 lap to go mark the top seven all playoff drivers most of them from Elkin Tech I don't know if Errolson's got the pace he needs to make the run with all the contact so far 
Gutterson might be a bit of a wild card in this with how he's performed today. He's led laps after all, but we've already seen the 81's been the best out of everyone mid to long run when he's got clean air. And he's putting his car in all of the perfect places right now. The 24 can't get a run. And when he did, he was in the wall uh, trying to do it. So this is working out great for the 81. Stayed out longer um, than his teammates. He's got the fresher tires uh, than uh, the number one, the 95, and the one in behind. And it's looking very, very good indeed as he comes through across the stripe to start lap 138. Just eight laps remaining in the race. How is it going to work out? It looks like it's going to be good because I think actually in the background, the 24 can't stay up. I think it's a battle now for second place, potentially. Brewstrom is trying it on the outside line once more, not able uh, to get the number one machine, but he's looking very racy in that bright esports car. I think Errolson's starting to burn up the tires here too with how much he's backing up by the corner apexes here. Just doesn't have the same amount of grip compared to earlier on. Can't seem to hold on as quick, obviously, with the dirty air. And everyone's almost in the same boat here. Drops lock. It might need another restart for anyone to get a chance at the 81 machine, especially with how tricky it looks to be to be able to get the pull, even with the draft. Yeah, it's looking great for the 81 with how it seems like the racing is happening. And I was just saying some good things about Bruce, but he's dropped off the back of the number one machine there. And actually, they're closing up a little bit inside the top three. So was that just a couple of laps of chilling, just making sure the tyres are not getting uh, too worked? But as we come in towards turn one, is the number one now going to be having a look at the 24? It's a three-car battle for the win here. The first round of the playoffs, the first person to lock themselves into the round of 10. We still have one more round here, the round of 15 a Richmond in a couple of weeks but does one of these drivers want to avoid any sort of carnage there and any sort of worry and maybe the number one machine is that because he comes to the inside of the 24 and now he's going to slide up to try and block that one off but the 24 is holding that momentum actually on the outside line he's still looking good to hold on to this one he's not going to let it be an Orkintec 1-2 too easily around the outside he continues in turns 1 and 2 and I tell you what the 24 he's still there and he's still got enough to hold on so I think he's still got some speed in that car potentially to battle but of course the one is going to continue to come back up the inside of three seeing that little left there out of turn two in the backdrop the 24 has burned up the right front tire and Gunnarsson has a chance to move from below the cut line to the top of the board for the next round if he can get to his teammate with four laps to go here cam i don't expect f Lidison to give it up easily even if they're teammates this is now a chance to battle for a championship or at least make it easier in a couple races time. You're not going to let him go easily here. Oh, definitely, because Havlitton, he might be sixth out of the 15, but he's only plus six, sorry, plus eight, uh, plus eight points. So that is getting very close, very squeaky bum time. Gunnarsson is only nine points behind him and he's 14th. So he's got a lot of work to do. So yes, this is, um, you know, driver for driver. This doesn't matter about being teammates or anything like that. This is just who wants to get that automatic spot into the round of 10 as let's see how this one goes. A couple of laps remaining at the line. So we got about four miles left in this race and it is the two teammates. The one goes to the high line, to the mid line to try and find something, try and find a bit of momentum onto the front straight. The 81 now goes high as we come across the line, three miles to go. Gunnarsson's found a little line that, that's not been able to work for everybody else. Get a diamond line going. Get a use of a ramp off the corner exit, especially in three and four. That might be the one chance to be able to get alongside here. Gunnarsson is a little bit quicker, too, on the straightaways with these lines. Can he get there is the huge question. The 81 continues to put his car in an amazing defensive position. The one is a couple of car lengths behind as we come to the final lap of the first race of the playoffs. The 81 leads onto it. Who is going to lead off it? The one is getting close. It's really just a two car battle now. The 24 is too far behind to get involved, but it's about a three, four car length lead for the 81. Down the back straight for the final time, and he's looking good. Can he hold it to the apex though and not run up wide? Keep that momentum going into 
towards turn three. Gunnarsson, he's going for it. He's taking every bit of speed that he can, but the 81 has looked good so day, or all day, and now he's going to come across the line to take the checker and lock himself into the round of 10. He's not going to need to worry at Richmond in a couple of weeks' time, and what a win that is for Halfley. His third race win of the season, and what a time to do it in a race where so many other drivers struggled inside uh, the top 15 of the championship, and he's going to be taking that automatic place and what a race it was as well the cautions didn't uh, prevent us to have an awesome finish which is what we like the tires and the strategy all came to a head and in the end Halfley hold on to his tires and Aritson he gave it a good try Gunnison as well but it was the 81 taking the race lead it came down again to what I emphasized what we've seen last long run the 81 once he got clean air was near untouchable on pace even with equal footing on the tires for everybody, Hefley was not in the same ballpark. He was in the bigger ballpark in terms of pace to get the win. And look at all the drivers there lining up to uh, to view the donuts from the 81, and then they all go for a bit of a, a group photo, which is what we love. So the 81 takes the lead. Gunnarsson second, Aritson third place, and Brewstrom in fourth then blixed in fifth that is going to be uh, some very interesting uh, uh numbers when we get um the results into the system to see exactly the uh the points finish can't wait to see that um but let's uh, of course uh, in a moment we'll try and get some uh, some interviews from these drivers to see what um they were feeling um over the uh, over the course of the race as we see the uh, donuts continuing there so let's actually pull in the uh the race victor there uh, of the 81 machine michael have listen mid donut joining us in the commentary booth so michael congratulations on locking yourselves into the round of 10 and uh, our first start with um yeah the the final pits up there you stayed out a lot longer than your teammates and it actually worked out pretty well how did the decision come about uh to staying out that long yeah, it wasn't really planned to stay out for that long. I just felt like yeah, I still had good pace. I was pulling away from the guys behind me. And I thought it was a bit too early. I was uh, afraid of the tires just dying in the end if I pitted too early. But uh, I was quite lucky with the caution. And then my dad was up to second somehow, which was kind of fun. Uh, and then just uh, after all the cautions, I went flat out to the end. Absolutely, you held on to it so well in the uh, in the final closing sort of 10, 15 lap run that we had at the end there. How much uh, were you looking in your mirrors or after about five laps, did you realize that you were putting your car in the perfect place to hold on? I was kind of just, if I could stay ahead of Aurel Sodden, I didn't think he could make a move. Uh, basically because of the air wash, uh, like it's really horrible r right here on this track. Uh, so just stay ahead of him as long as I could, try to help Gunnarsson once he eventually tried to pass him. Uh, Gunnarsson was actually the main threat. I do not know how he could have so much speed like on alternative lines on me, it's crazy. Absolutely, and I was going to ask you that as well. Of course your teammates uh, with the number one machine, but was that every man for himself in the final few laps? Uh, you know, he was giving it a good run on you, but I guess you're both wanting that automatic place. I mean, obviously we both want uh, the win and I wouldn't blame him for trying, like he, he really tried and I, I pushed like a madman to stay in front of him, so like we both tried for the win, uh, but in the end we didn't really have any team orders, so it was like, you just don't wreck each other basically, that's the only team order we, we usually have in the end. That's yeah, good, uh, good to see. And, and last question is, we move to Richmond now, of course it's going to be a very tricky um, track on the on the short track. What can you do now? Because the race doesn't really mean anything to you as such in terms of the round of 10 or getting into the round of 10. Um, so are you going to be trying to help your teammates or are you just going to be trying to uh, get another win yourself? Well, obviously I want to help my teammates. So it would be epic if we could all be uh, in the final at Miami. It would be the dream. Uh, but I know from last season, both me and Gunnar Schon and Blixt were really fast at Richmond. I ended up winning it before getting post-race penalties. So I know I have the speed there, so I guess we'll just have to see how the race and the qualifying pans out. But obviously I'm looking for the win again. I want to win all the playoff races if possible. 
<clears throat> that would be a, certainly a great championship run uh, for you. So congratulations, the first race victory of the playoffs. Good job. Thank you very much. And then next, we'll uh, bring in the number one machine, but it wasn't to be today in terms of P1. It was P2 in the end for you, Eunice, but we've spoken to you a couple of times recently. You're getting into form at the good time, and uh, you're coming into this in 14th out of 15 in the, uh, in the playoffs as well. So you really needed a good result, and despite not getting the automatic win, this must still uh, boost your points tally very well. Yeah, uh, uh, one, two finish, uh, really good. Didn't manage to overtake half, half leader and uh, the dirt air was uh, so hard to try to pass on. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we were just speaking with Michael there. You, obviously, you were slightly worse on the tyre situation, but you still had really good pace at the end there. So well, were you feeling that or was that just pure motivation to try and get the win? <laughs> I think it was pure <laughs> motivation. Uh, just pushing the car to the limit, I'm so close to the wall, so. <laughs> yeah, and try to take some different lines and see if it works. Did work yep. to get to P2, but not P2. Yeah, absolutely. And once again, you as a team, all can tech, were looking very, very strong. You had four cars inside the top six, five in the top eight um, at the checker. Um, it looks like you really are the team to uh, to beat going into into the next race. So how are you going to work that uh, in Richmond or is it too tricky of a track to try and do that? Yeah, I think we've got a 1-2 at Richmond last season. So I think we can uh, manage some good results over there as well. Yeah, perfect. We uh, we wish you luck for that. Good job today. Thank you very much. And then we'll uh, bring in the number 24 of Alexander Aronson. What a race uh, you had, Alex. Uh, <laughs> involved in a couple of the uh, the cautions, uh, in the wrecks for, for the cautions, and then ending up fighting for the race lead. So you must actually be pretty happy with the result in the end. Well, yeah, considering everything that happened during the race, I have to be happy with that that, point, that second place, uh, which, is a, which is a decent points finish, uh, especially considering that a lot of the playoff drivers had issues uh, throughout the race and, and finished uh, quite far back in the field. Uh, I mean, yeah, I felt I had a pretty fast uh, number 24, uh, Moby Hubel, like Camaro, uh, all, all day or all, all week, I'd say, but didn't qualify as well as I'd hoped, because uh, obviously clean air around here is everything, as you could see in that last run to the finish, where we couldn't really pass each other. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you about this as well, because also your teammate Jesper, you uh, struggled a little bit in qualifying. So was that just with your preparation for the race, uh, f you know, for the track, maybe just not quite getting the setup where you wanted it? Um, or is it just because the field is so competitive? No, I mean the, the setup doesn't suit me at all. It's way, way too tight. You can't really, you can't even spin out. Well, unless you do it while getting trying to get to pit road. <laughs> but, uh, so yeah. yeah, absolutely. So hopefully you, uh, yeah, work that out for for Richmond and uh, yeah, fighting for the race lead again. Good job on P three today. Yeah, thank you. I think think Richmond should uh, should suit me better. I haven't tried the setup yet, but uh, I like the track and uh, I've had success there before. So hopefully I'll I'll, um, I'll be able to finish uh, up front. Good stuff. We'll see you in a couple of weeks. See ya. As uh, that uh, concludes our uh, uh, coverage here of the first race of the playoffs of the Bolin Svenska E Racing League. And, but of course, that is not all. We have one final round of the round of 15 at Richmond in a couple of weeks' time. And we can't wait to see what that is going to do on the, uh, the very, very short track indeed. And that is going to be a, a tricky one. Loads of cautions, I'm sure, uh, but it's certainly been a, an interesting one. Before we work our way to Michigan and Dover in the round of 10, and then Homestead, Miami for the final on the 9th of May, we've still got a, a couple of months of action to work out who our champion is going to be. But if, as well, for Berlin's Fantasy Racing League, and we also have the Formula Series, which will come back next week as well. Uh, that returns after a couple of weeks break um, as we continue our way on as uh, we continue uh, with the Red Bull Ring to start the final re three rounds of the season. It's going to be a lot of fun there, so we can't wait to see how that is going to uh, work out. But it's been myself, Cameron Roger, Justin Prince alongside me and Dane Baird uh, doing the production of this Race Spot TV broadcast. And until next week, Thursday night, same time, same place, we'll see you then. Goodbye.
Threat control scoring has ended.